If you watch my channel on the regular, you can probably already tell that we are not standing in my kitchen. And that is because my husband and I have done something kind of crazy, something we never thought we would be able to do or want to do for our family. Last summer was kind of a tough one for us for a lot of reasons. And at the end of it, I walked into my husband's office and I said, we gotta do something different. We need to shake things up a little bit. So we decided that we would get a vacation rental, a house in the mountains, and that we would, we would come here and work remotely and hike and enjoy the cooler temperatures and just get out of the heat for a few weeks. And yes, I do plan to film some videos for you guys. I'm working on a one pan kind of minimal ingredient video for you that you'll be seeing in a couple weeks. I'm going to do a big vacation grocery haul. So lots of fun content headed your way. But before I left town, I challenged my family, like I do from time to time, to use stuff up. And it was especially important this time because we're going to be gone for a few weeks and some friends of ours who are having work done on their house right now are actually going to come and stay in our home. So I wanted to clean out the fridge and the freezer as much as possible so that they could fill it with the things that they need. I make these kinds of videos all the time on my channel. In fact, I have an entire playlist of them where I just challenge myself to use stuff up that I've had hanging out around my pantry, fridge, and freezer, especially stuff that spoils or partially used or open packages of items. I also have something new and exciting to accompany this video, so make sure you stay tuned. Let's rewind to before we left and I'll show you how we were able to kind of clean out our fridge. Here is the state of the fridge right now. I've done no cleaning, no moving around of anything. It's just, you know, full of various and sundry, various leftovers, almost empty, but not quite containers of things and all of this or most of it at least needs to be gone by the end of the week. Freezer isn't quite as imperative as far as getting rid of items and using things up because some of these things will keep for a few weeks but I'd still like to pare it down if we can especially open packages of stuff. And then there's the pantry and we've definitely used a few things up over the summer but still have half used packages of stuff that I like to use up this week and then it just needs to be kind of cleaned up and tidied at the end so we can see what we have left. I keep seeing this recipe for a salad from Portillo's. I think that's a restaurant chain in like the Midwest. I keep seeing this recipe pop up in my Pinterest feed and it looks so good. And when I got to look at the recipe, it actually has several things in it that I am trying to use up. Things like uh, corn on the cob, fresh corn on the cob, bacon, salad greens, and I even have some of the particular kind of yogurt that the dressing recipe calls for. So that's what we're gonna have for dinner tonight. Let me show you. The recipe is coming from a website called Chelsea's Messy Apron. I'll leave it linked down below in the description box. And she mentions in the blog post that accompanies this recipe that the dressing that the restaurant uses is slightly different from the one that she's using here, but I think the one that she um, comes up with the creamy balsamic dressing looks really good. It uses honey vanilla Greek yogurt, balsamic vinegar, maple syrup, olive oil, Dijon mustard, and then garlic, sea salt, and fresh cracked black pepper. So I'm gonna whip that up, and then I'm just gonna toss all the ingredients together with the dressing, and it will be ready to serve up. And this is one of those that you probably wanna wait until it's ready to serve to dress it. I don't think it will like keep very well, Overnight, I don't think it'll keep very well throughout the day. So wait until you serve it to dress the salad. That's my suggestion. That's how I'm gonna do it. And we're going to make it so that hopefully there are no leftovers. For the salad, I have some romaine that I have washed and chopped here in this big bowl. I have a couple of tomatoes that I've diced up. It calls for grilled chicken. I didn't have any, so I just pulled some chicken nuggets out of the freezer that I'm trying to use up. I popped them into the air fryer and then I let those cool down and I've chopped them up. I have some fresh corn. The recipe doesn't call for it, but we had a grill night the other night and have some leftover corn on the cob, so I'm gonna to toss some of that in as well. I have some cooked and crumbled bacon. This is about six or seven slices of bacon. One cup of ditalini pasta. These are just the little, almost kind of like SpaghettiO style pastas. And I cooked those just to al dente and rinsed them. Gorgonzola cheese. I actually have this left over from the Savannah chop salad that I made in a recent video. And I'll probably also use uh, some green onions as garnish. It is almost dinner time and it is currently 99 degrees in Tulsa, America. The heat index is 106. 
It is too hot for makeup. It is too hot for me to fix my hair. I know that it is hotter in other parts of the country, but I just do not feel like cooking and hot food does not sound good right now. And since I am trying to clean out the fridge, I'm going to rate it for any cold cuts or cheeses that we need to use up. I think I have some rolls and some crackers. I think I've got half a watermelon. Maybe I have some veggies. I don't know. I'm just going to throw all of that out on the counter and people can make sandwiches and snack plates with it because today is just that day when I'm hitting a wall and it's supposed to cool down a little bit tomorrow so I should be able to have, have a few ideas for things I want to make but just like I think about the weather other times of the year when I'm making meal plans in the summertime if I look at the week and there's a high of 100 high of 101 high of 99 and then a high of 85 it's that high of 85 day when I'm actually gonna like fire up the stove in the oven and that day is not today. So we'll make do with some cold items that we can throw together to have a little something to eat tonight. Also gonna be a good steward of this almost gone bottle of wine that I found. Yay. I had a bag of frozen hash browns in the freezer and a few smoked sausage links in the fridge that I wanted to use up. So I decided to attempt sort of like a breakfast style casserole in the crock pot, although we're probably gonna be eating this for lunch today. I threw the hash browns into the crock pot. I am using a crock pot liner for this because I just need to press the easy button today. And then I chopped up the smoked sausage links and threw those in on top. And I added half a block of cream cheese that I need to use up for my fridge as well. And I've had that cooking on high for about an hour and I'm gonna stir in the rest of the ingredients for this casserole. I actually let this cook on high about an hour and a half, so about 90 minutes, and I'm just kind of stirring in the cream cheese because it's all nice and soft. If I had sour cream, I'd put some of that in at this point, but I don't. But what I do have is a little bit of plain Greek yogurt, so I'm gonna stir in probably about three quarters of a cup or so of this plain Greek yogurt that we're trying to use up some cheddar cheese that I shredded from a block that we still had hanging out in the refrigerator, a little salt and pepper. The sausages are gonna give it a lot of flavor because they're pretty salty, but I'm gonna go ahead and stir in a little bit more. I'm just gonna stir this all together. I'm gonna pop the lid back on and it should only take it about another hour or so to cook those potatoes to done because my crock pot brand slow cooker actually cooks really hot. It's probably hard to go wrong with potatoes and sausage and cheese, but this crock pot cheesy potato concoction is pretty good if I do say so myself. This summer, I have been working along with a team of people on some big projects. One of them is really big and it will be launching hopefully in September. So make sure that you are subscribed so you don't miss that. Something new and exciting, but I have a slightly smaller project that I've been working on for a couple of months now and it's finally ready to share with you guys. I have a new pantry cooking ebook. This this is where I go back through some of my recent videos and I actually jot down ingredients and directions for the recipes that I create for videos like this. I put one of these out a couple of years ago and this year I went back to the last year and a half of videos and I picked out some of my favorite recipes from videos like this and a couple of other videos where there were recipes that I just felt like really uh, were favorites and needed to be shared. This cookbook has over 20 recipes and these are not things I can link to because they're recipes that I made up for specific videos. The book is simply but beautifully laid out in black and white so it's easy to download, read, and or print. And you will find it by following the link in the description box below. So if you follow that link in the description box, it'll take you to my Gumroad page where you can purchase my new pantry cooking ebook. I will leave a list in the description box below that includes the recipes that are in this ebook. Again, follow that link in the description box if it's something that interests you, if you want to have printable versions of a lot of my favorite recipes that I've shared over the last year. We have been at a swim meet for a lot of the afternoon but before I left I thought about dinner and I decided to go ahead and grab a small pork shoulder from the freezer and toss it into the crock pot. It's one of the pre-seasoned pork shoulders from Aldi that I keep buying. They're absolutely delicious and so easy. So that's been cooking. We're gonna shred it up. And to go along with that, I'm gonna take this box of pasta salad and I'm gonna peruse my fridge and see what I can add to it to kind of jazz it up. 
We just arrived at our rental in the mountains in Angel Fire, New Mexico. I probably look a fright. I've been in the car all day and it is close to dinner time. So I'm gonna get some soup going on the stove. I actually grabbed some canned goods from our pantry before we left. These are all non-perishable items that I'm gonna use to make just like a dump and go, like one pot soup that I can get going on the stove. You could do this in the crock pot as well. But if you are traveling somewhere and looking for something like that you can actually take with you if you're you know, driving in a car, then uh, this would, I think, be a good option. We're gonna make a chicken tortilla soup with all non-perishable items. I rummaged around for a can opener and I was also able to procure a nice, sturdy, large stock pot. So I'm just gonna empty all of these cans in. I have one can of beans, navy beans, which are our favorites. If we're putting beans in a soup, that is. One can of hominy. And no, I'm not draining any of these because I actually want all of the starch and the salt that's in the canned goods to season it. One can of white corn. I've sometimes seen this called uh, shoe peg corn, or at least shoe peg corn uh, was what I would normally use, but this is what was in my pantry. One can of tomatoes. One can of chicken breast. One can of green chilies. If I can get the lid, oops. Maybe you didn't get this lid off very well. There we go. And normally I would season this with a little bit of ranch seasoning and a little bit of taco seasoning, but I happen to have this Fiesta ranch dip mix in my pantry back home. So I'm actually gonna just throw some of this in and I'll probably also add about two cups or so of water. I'm gonna find a lid somewhere and get that simmering on the stove at least 30 minutes, but I'll probably let it simmer about an hour. And then we'll be ready to eat this with some tortilla chips. So easy, just dump and go meal after a day of traveling. And we don't have to spend a fortune going out to eat somewhere on this particular night. Thank you again for watching more content coming your way from this kitchen that you see in the background. And don't forget to check out my new pantry cooking ebook. It's linked in the description box below. Pick out one of these videos to watch next and I'll see you there.